In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is sphericity? Now, I know myself personally, when I've come across definitions and explanations of sphericity, I've been left with not really understanding in a clear way what it is. And so what I've done uh, is I've developed an example that can demonstrate what sphericity is in a way that's very intuitive and that I think just about anyone can understand. Now, sphericity, as many of you might know, is an assumption associated with the one way within subjects ANOVA. In fact, it's associated with any within subjects ANOVA that has more than two levels in the analysis. So here's a data set that I've generated that is going to exemplify exactly what sphericity is. Because this data set with three levels actually has perfect sphericity. And it's very rare to come across something like that in the field. I've generated the data such that they will satisfy the condition of sphericity perfectly and it will exemplify what it is. So I'm going to analyze the data like a typical one way within subjects ANOVA because I'm going to prove to you that these data have perfect sphericity. So here's the factor, three levels, and I'm going to define them. So I've done this analysis already. The three levels are in here. Click OK. And here is Mochley's test of sphericity. It's a W, Mochley's W of 1.0, the chi-square is uh, 1.0. Chi-square is 0, degrees of freedom of 2, and significance of 1.0, and the Hünfeld is 1.0. These data have perfect sphericity, as I mentioned earlier. So what is sphericity? How did I manage to get these data to have perfect sphericity? Well, I need you to go back to the t-test, paired t-test formula. Now, there are various forms of this formula. In my opinion, this one is the most interesting and intuitive. The denominator in this formula is the standard error of the difference between two means. Now, this last term on the right side is uh, unique to the paired sample t-test. So if you remove this 2 times covariance divided by n portion, you would actually have the independent sample t-test formula. But by adding this 2 times covariance divided by n, you have a paired sample t-test formula. Now in a one-way within subjects ANOVA with three levels, there are three possible pairwise paired sample t-tests, right? You've got mean 1 versus mean 2, and then you have mean 1 versus mean 3, and you have mean 2 versus mean 3. Now each one of those paired sample t-tests has a standard error of the difference between the two means. This one here is based on the variance of mean 1 and mean 2 and the covariance between uh, the variable 1 and variable 2. And this variable, he this uh, comparison here between 1 and 3, well I'd use the variance of variable 1 and 3, time 1 and time 3, and then the covariance between those. And because the covariance across time, uh, across variables, tends to be positive, you end up with a reduced standard error of the difference between the means in comparison to the independent sample t-test. Now, the third one is the same way. Now, what sphericity uh, is, when sphericity is satisfied perfectly, you get standard error of the differences between the means that are exactly the same. That's what sphericity is. So in a one-way uh, within subjects ANOVA, underlying that analysis are um, uh, several uh, pairwise comparisons. And those pairwise comparisons have to be associated with the same standard error of the difference between the means. Now that means the variances can be unequal and the covariances can be unequal. And I'll show you that these data in this sample, that I, uh, this sample of data that I generated actually have equal, uh, unequal variances and covariances. So here's the covariance matrix. We can see on the diagonal, these are the variances. So 289, 625, 1089. And these are the covariances. So covariance between time 1 and time 2 is 48.4 and the covariance between time 1 and 3 is 280 and the covariance between time 2 is 400 and time 2 and time 3 is 448 so everything's different here all the variances are very different and the covariances are different but the standard error of the difference between the means actually work out to be exactly the same and i calculated that in this excel spreadsheet myself and you can see that i've inputted the 
variances and covariances, and I calculated the standard error of the difference between the means, and they're all identical, 5.218. Now, SPSS gets, can calculate the standard error of the difference between two means for you in the paired sample t-test, and I put 1 and 2, time 1, time 2 there, and I run the analysis, and here is my standard error of the difference between the two means, 5.2 one eight. That's for time one, time two. So I do it again for the next pair of means. Time one and time three. Five point two one eight. Standard error of the difference between the mean. And finally I can do it again for the last paired sample t test, which is time two and versus time three. And again five point two one eight. So I've got exactly the same standard error of the difference between the means associated with all three pairwise comparisons underlying this one way within subjects ANOVA. And that's why I got perfect sphericity. So sphericity is the difference between the standardized, the standard error of the difference between means in the paired sample t-test case. And when you get very significant sphericity violation, it's saying that the standard error of the difference between the means is very different across comparisons and therefore you need to use an adjustment in the one way within subjects ANOVA which would include the Hudenfeldt or the greenhouse geyser. So that's sphericity.